private sector to take it from there. So part of the message might be, um, don't look for government to do everything. We can't afford it. You make the investment. Yeah, okay, but fine. But is there not a role there, though, for government to act as the catalyst to encourage it and create the environment where that can happen? So not necessarily doing it. You, know, you don't want to be just led to do everything. But uh... Well, I guess I would come back to making the same statement, not, not to be argumentative, but... Oh, please uh, do it's, be. It's an, it's, an innovative, yeah. it's an innovative attitude in the marketplace. And if you want government to stimulate it, perhaps you're not likely to succeed, and perhaps sometimes the best thing the government can do is to say, you're the private sector, if you want to exploit this, get on with it then, don't look to the government. I'm, I, I'm, I'm feeling Republican, which is extremely troubling to me. Uh, but, uh, Particularly at the moment. I'm yes, sure. exactly. Uh, so I, I put it a challenge to the private sector, uh, run with it, don't look for the government to spoon feed it to you. I cannot agree more, I think. If you, if you <laughs> this look is for, If you look for the government to, to do everything, especially also in innovation, uh, you can wait a long time, I think. Uh, it's a role to, to open up the information that's in there. Uh, there's a lot of taxpayers' money and value from taxpayers' money that's in there. So open it up, use open standards, and then uh, try to push the private sector to, to use it in innovative ways. Okay, but you know, that sounds great. Um, but we know that government is the largest purchaser of IT, so it is actually going to be what you do in government, what you procure, what you actually purchase, what you lead, is going to have the, the single largest impact on the market and what is happening in the public sector. So whether that's encouraging SMEs uh, to break sort of the stalemate of the big integrators controlling the large projects, making it more modular, whatever else, and encouraging that. So I don't think government hasn't got a role, but it's maybe not the role that it's always the one that it's uh, chosen to apply in the past. Disagree? Agree? I disagree. I disagree there. Uh, definitely. I, I think, uh, again, it, it's not because you're spending, I think in, in Belgium, on the federal level, we're spending less than 3% of our annual budget on IT, less than 3%. I think in, in most markets, uh, financial markets, telecom markets, uh, the IT spend is way up there. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, we have a large budget, that's true. Um, but, but in looking for services and innovative ways of delivering services to our citizens and, and, and businesses. Uh, we're all, always, I think, a couple of years behind the private sector uh, because we don't feel this competitive push of, of trying to grab market share. Uh, but we need to follow them. And, and again, we need to open up, see that uh, people use that, and, and see how we can later on integrate it uh, and integrate uh, those new ideas into our government uh, service offering. Uh, we don't want to be uh, a bleeding edge, we want to be leading edge. I think if you look at a pragmatic example, and I take travel as one that's worked quite well in the UK and elsewhere, of, of where government agencies or funded agencies have, um, for a variety of reasons, opened up a lot of interfaces to travel information so that third party developers could innovate around it. And you see a whole host of apps on mobile devices and other things. Uh, and that's great, and it shows the innovation of the market, but there's still a lot of contention there about some of the licensing and how open open is and the commercial agreements. Um, and I was looking recently, and even if you want to write a free app that uses, for example, the London Underground uh, schematic, uh, you have to pay for it, even if your intention is to give away the app and not actually make any revenue yourself. And I think there's still a lot of... Um, a lack of clarity around... Uh, government's relationship with data that arguably the taxpayers already funded and could be exploited by uh, private sector innovation versus where does government put that line on how open it makes it if there's a potential revenue stream that could be of benefit to taxpayers, uh, particularly if a large commercial company such as Google started itself building billion dollar business off the back of free maps that were provided by governments so that the taxpayer had funded. But why so would that worry government? Well, just, well, particularly in the economic circumstances, again, it'd be looking for any opportunity yeah, to maximise revenue. But, so we, but we saw that in the past. OK, I'm, I'm a Brit as well, so apologies for using that as, a, as an exemplar. But we saw in the past is that the vast majority of research institutions 
didn't release the code that they produced because they were expected to get a return on their IPR. With the net result, it never saw the light of day. Yeah. So the question is, you know, what's, where's the balancing point? You're looking for a short-term return on IPR for maybe 1% or 0.1%. Or you're actually looking to, to widen out the general economy? Because that really takes you into the whole open innovation yeah. uh, angle. And, and actually, the recent changes in the UK are very much around if you take uh, a taxpayer's shilling to do your research, then it should be uh, put into the public domain and yeah. exposed to the full light of day. But I mean, there was an interesting report from Bournemouth University recently that, uh, that looked at a lot of the evidence and seemed to suggest that those companies that keep uh, a lot of their data protected through uh, intellectual property patents and other things, actually ha have a declining R&D expenditure. So it almost seemed to be that those that cease to be open invest less and less in R&D relative to those that remain open in their culture. What about, you know, we, we've used the term open innovation. Um, Andy talked about open government. Do those two terms coincide? Are they, are they mutually compatible? I wouldn't call them incompatible, but I, would, I, I do see them as being uh, different. Uh, I think that transparency in government is an extremely important uh, uh, value. I think we often take a very short historical viewpoint and forget how differently governments that once were trusted have acted uh, uh, throughout the world. And I don't think that transparency is something you can cease to be vigilant about and just assume that because we've turned a corner in the last 30 or 50 or 100 years that we can't go back around that corner again. It can and will happen around the world. And uh, I, I think we're, we're foolish to, to pretend otherwise. Open innovation, I think, is, is something quite different that needs to be opportunistic. Government can create uh, the, the areas in which it can happen, but I think when you get to open innovation, then it can become more uh, interactive. In the U.S., for example, there's a lot of enormous investments in software. The government is seeking to move out into open source communities where the private sector can bear uh, the, the, the cost of further development, uh, sell services back to the government, sell services to the marketplace. Uh, that takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, mm -hmm. overcoming inertia to make it happen. Uh, but the consequences in reduced cost to government and increased value in the marketplace uh, can be substantial. Anyone else want to comment on the yes, aspect? Because it's, I, I'm quite intrigued. Um, you know, the open government is a phrase that's been well used. And, but different people do seem to take it, come at it from different things. So in, one part is very much the enabling the citizen. It's opening up the data for the citizen. It's uh, cr looking at the citizen-centric, if you like, um, uh, capabilities and, and benefits. Whereas I think the open innovation thing is OK, saying there's another role of government, which is uh, encouraging the whole market. Uh, and what can be done there? So I'm particularly interested in see what Neely Cruz is going to be saying about that aspect of it, because it does start at the research thing, argue, but it doesn't necessarily has to carry right the way through the political will. Um, so, you know, it's not just a yes minister, this looks good on a piece of paper, but actually can we flow that through into some pragmatic activities? And, uh, you know, you mentioned the Open Data Institute in the UK. Now, that's an interesting investment put in government to encourage and act as a catalyst for that. Yeah, and that's designed to drive sort of economic opportunities within the yeah. private sector. But I think when you, when you go back to open government and open innovation, again, you've got to be careful what, what open you're talking about, because open government's a pretty broad church, covering transparency, participation, yeah. consultation, collaboration. Um, and it, it depends how far governments, I guess, want to go in the digital age of a participatory inclusive mechanism for citizens to engage much closer with the policy making and evidential basis of, of policy making. Okay, let, let's just open it up for just a few questions because we're quite tight on time and uh, but I know I saw one hand, is it Nicola you wanted to make a comment? Is, is, is there, a there is a microphone at the back so if we can, yeah, Mayal's going to bring it to you now so. As I said, when, when, in this section, we're not, this, we're not going to take too many questions, so forgive me, but we wanted to really act as a, a little bit of a, near the front now, um, we actually just want to act as a catalyst for thinking as we get on to the discussions and the panel ones. Nicola, you... Thank you. One, one question. So my name is Nicola Petiot. I'm also Belgian. A question for uh, Peter Strix. You've 
spoken about the sharing that is one of the ministerial program and I was wondering the extension of the sharing that you that that was expected by the minister is it a sharing uh, limited to all the minister to the administration bodies or it does the sharing goes beyond that up to the citizens and the companies uh, initially the federal government is limited to sharing within the federal administrations. Uh, we have a very uh, complex uh, law and, 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 and uh, everything that has to do with, with law uh, about sharing with other authorities. Uh, so imagine that uh, at the federal level we develop a software to exchange data between administrations. Yeah? Uh, called a messaging system. We did that, so I'm speaking from a pragmatic point of view. Uh, in 2003, I think, uh, the Walloon region uh, asked the federal government if they could just take the software. It was custom built. And then the Flemish region opposed to that and said, yeah, we, we just had a call for tender and uh, we're spending some money and it's not fair that the Walloon region is uh, using uh, federal government money, basically, uh, to do that. And so they opposed that. And, and uh, the Balloon region did their own call for tender just to discover 18 months later uh, that the Flemish region that had developed the call for tender before was not able to pick a good choice, make a good choice. And then the Flemish region came to the federal government and asked for the same software. And then the Walloon region opposed to that. Uh, because they uh, did launch the call for tender later, they bought the software, and they said, hey guys, this is not serious. This is the type of problems that we are confronted with. Uh, but, but again, so what we are doing right now, uh, and this is not something we did in 2002, 2003, is right from the start, open it up. Open it up to everybody, and so, basically, everything that FedEx develops, all custom-built software is open source from the start. Yeah, but it's, again, limited to uh, the sharing of the FED program is limited to the federal administrations. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, no, I, I wouldn't agree with that, that it's very narrow. Uh, why? Because, in general, uh, I think a lot of the government and citizen, uh, government to citizen and government to business interaction is done with the local governments. So you have regional governments, local governments, a lot of the interaction is taking place there. Uh, you have very few interactions on the, uh, on the federal level. I think it has to do with justice, uh, defense, social security, that's a big one, and, and, and finance. But, but a lot of the finance part is already...